Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jeff Lenoski and this is my 2020 Reeb Squeeb bike check. Now you might be wondering why I'm doing a bike check wearing a jersey. So I started working with the guys from Pearl Izumi. They came up with the jersey concept and then we applied it to the frame. So when you look at the details on the frame, the Reeb graphics, the color, it all ties into the jersey, which was a really cool touch. So let's start with the frame really quick. This is a 2020 Reeb Squeeb. This is available in two different configurations this year. You can just get it set up for 130 millimeters of travel or 150. The only thing that's gonna change is the head tube angle is gonna be a 65 and a half degree angle when you run it at 130, and it'll be 65 if you run it at 150. The only thing you have to do to change the travel is change the shock mount. So it's super simple, longer stroke shock, change the shock mount, and you can change the same frame from a 130 to a 150. So let's start at the top. I'm running Pro Tharsis carbon bars and a Tharsis stem. This is the brand new 35 millimeter line. So super fat bar, fat stem with a wide stance. It gives you a really stable grip side to side, no flex, which is really awesome. And then the contact points, I'm running Ergon GE1 grips. This is the factory orange grip. And then I put on an oil slick bar clamp. And then to match that, I have the Ergon SM Pro saddle with the oil slick rails, looks super sick. Then I wanted to stick with that oil slick theme. So I did a couple extra touches with um, oil slick tie bolts in the brakes and on the cable mounts and the water bottle cage and then if you take a look at my head tube badge it also has a little heat treated oil slick treatment to it which looks super sick. On dropper post duties I'm running a PNW post. It's 200 millimeters drop which is pretty sweet and then that's hooked up to an integrated Shimano dropper lever and then that is connected to Shimano XTR trail brake levers. So these things work really awesome for pistons, great smooth feel, and then I run 180 millimeter rotor in the front and 180 in the back. Gives me all the stopping power that I need. And then the front shifter is a Shimano XTR shifter, and that is connected to a Shimano XTR rear derailleur. For the rear cassette, I'm running a 1051. Gives me a super wide range of gears. And then up front, I'm running a 36 tooth sprocket connected to a Shimano XTR trail crank. And then for pedals, I'm pretty much always clipped in. 99% of the time you see me riding this bike, unless I'm at the bike park, I'm gonna be clipped in. So I like to run the Shimano XTR trail pedals, nice slightly wider base. And then one of the most important parts of the drivetrain is the MRP bash guard. You don't have good shifting gears if you're smashing your chain on rocks and stuff like that. So the MRP bash guard, it's a couple extra ounces with gives you all the ease of mind that you could need to try some of the biggest moves and if you come up short and hit your bash guard you're not going to hit your drivetrain compromise any of that when you're out in the wilderness for the suspension 2020 is another year on dvo um, i'm running a dvo diamond in the front and if you check out the fork it also has custom stickered graphics so just like the frame the decals are made by stickered they did decals to match my jersey on the frame and the fork so the fork is set at 150. I like to run my suspension normal just with about 20, 22% sag. Um, and then I run my compression, both high speed and low speed in the middle. And I tend to run my rebound kind of fast. On the rear shock, this is a DVO Topaz. And I'm always going to run my rear shock in the trail mode. It's very, very rare that I ever put it in open or closed for climbing. So I just set that for 25% sag, 20% sag, uh, keep it nice and firm in the trail position and gives me all the travel that I need and my suspension actuates a little bit more but it gives me awesome traction. So this big bright orange water bottle on my bike doesn't just match my grips, it also shows I have orange seal in my tires. So that's a super important part of staying flat free out on the trail is putting all my trust in orange seal. Moving down to the wheels, I asked the guys from i9 to design me a set of wheels. I gave them the concept of the bike, said I wanted oil slick, and this is what they came up with. It's a combination of dark and light blue spokes, and then it also has gold and orange. So it, it kind of has an oil slick look, but I feel like it just blends into the bike and looks awesome. I've been running the Enduro 305s all last year. They worked awesome, so I've chose them for my bike again this year. Um, the rims are nice and wide. They're strong. I basically didn't take a spoke wrench to them at all last year 
in the front it's a regular boost hub in the back it's a hydra hub and the free hub engagement is unbelievable and that's really important when you're riding technical terrain is having small increments between when your pedal engages it helps me clean stuff that i never thought i could and then mounted to those wheels are vittoria tires in the front i have a vittoria martello in a 2.6 this is a enduro tire it's a bigger meatier knob it has a really good tire compound and i like to run big fat front tires in a heavier knob that way i could just put my tire where i want it and i know that my bike's going to follow and then in the back i like to have something a little bit more faster rolling so this is a vittoria agaro in the back this has the same tread compound as the front but the tread design is much smaller so much smaller knobs is going to roll a lot faster it has awesome drive traction it's going to save me a little bit weight and just make the bike feel a little bit more agile all over all right so that's a quick look at my bike just wanted to give you an idea of the bike that I'll be riding this year. I've had a bunch of questions on my page asking about it, so now you've seen it. If you have any more questions, comment below. I also wanted you to know why I chose gray and green this year instead of the fluorescent yellow. I wanted to do a collaboration with Pearl Izumi and try to get one big cohesive kit going, and I'm pretty psyched with the way it turned out. So hopefully you like the bike. You're going to be seeing it in a lot more videos. If you have any more questions, post them below. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And until next time, get out there and be a boss.